hit the subscribe button or visit us at auau.auanet.org. This is an AUA core curriculum video demonstrating surgical technique for female stress urinary incontinence. Mid-urethral slings are the most commonly utilized option in contemporary surgical management of stress urinary incontinence. We present a step-by-step -step instructional video for placement of a retropubic synthetic mid-urethral sling. Our video will highlight the steps taken to perform a bottom-up transvaginal retropubic mid-urethral sling. We will describe the use of the original tension-free vaginal tape upon which much of the literature on mid-urethral slings is based. We will review the necessary instruments, surgical positioning and exposure, local anesthesia and incision placement, dissection, trocar trajectory and passage, cystoscopic inspection after trocar placement, sling tensioning, and closure of the vaginal mucosa. Our patient is a 44-year-old female with a history of stress urinary incontinence with coughing, sneezing, and walking. She will soak through a pad when she goes for a run and on average wears three thick pads a day. Her past medical history is significant for five vaginal deliveries. The patient's physical exam was remarkable for a positive Q-tip test ranging from 0 to 60 degrees and significant leakage on supine stress test. Instruments required for a mid-urethral sling placement include a rigid cystoscope with a 17 French sheath and a 30 and 70 degree lens, a weighted vaginal speculum, Alice clamps, curved Metzenbaum and straight Mayo scissors, a 15 blade, 60 cc's of half percent lidocaine for suprapubic incisions and retropubic hydrodissection, half percent lidocaine with 1 in 200,000 epinephrine for the vaginal incision, 2O polyglactan suture, and benzoin and steri strips. And though not pictured here, retropubic sling trocars with attachable trocar handles, which may vary based on the type and brand of sling used, a polypropylene mesh mid urethral sling, and an 18 French Foley catheter with a straight catheter guide. We typically perform this procedure under deep sedation with local anesthesia. The patient is placed in dorsal orthotomy position and prepped and draped in normal fashion. The table is placed in Trendelenburg. An 18 French Foley catheter is used to drain the bladder. The midline is marked one finger breadth above the symphysis and the three millimeter suprapubic incision sites are marked two and a half centimeters laterally on either side. 30 cc's of half percent lidocaine is used to infiltrate the retropubic space and along the tract where each trocar will pass. Stab incisions are made with a 15 blade. The vaginal speculum is placed. Here you can see important anatomic landmarks, notably the level of the mid to distal urethra and the level of the bladder neck. Half percent lidocaine with epinephrine is injected under the vaginal mucosa. A one centimeter long mark is made along the distal anterior vagina, starting one to one and a half centimeters from the urethral meatus in order to approximate the area of the mid to distal urethra. An incision is made with a 15 blade. This is a deep cut to maintain a thick layer of vaginal skin. Alice clamps are used for retraction. Additional anesthesia is directed along the tract. Curved Metzenbaum scissors are used to create a tunnel under the vaginal mucosa away from the urethra. Typically, only one or two sniffs with the scissors are necessary. The scissor tips are gently spread while applying mild pressure to dissect two to three centimeters lateral to the incision in the direction of the patient's ipsilateral shoulder. The bladder is now emptied. The Foley catheter with the catheter guide is then carefully placed into the urethra. We attach it to the drapes over the patient's leg to deviate the urethra and the bladder neck to the contralateral side. The trocar handle is attached to the trocar. The trocar needle is passed into the dissected vaginal space with a trajectory towards the ipsilateral shoulder. 
the trocar is placed under the pubic bone before curving it up to the pre-made suprapubic stab wound. Care is taken to also inspect the vaginal wall to ensure no buttonholing was created. The rigid cystoscope with the 70 degree lens is then inserted to confirm there is no perforation of the bladder. It is important to make sure that the bladder is well distended. We can see that the trocar easily rolls back and forth, confirming the trocar has not skied the detrusor muscle or perforated the bladder mucosa. We also inspect the urethra with a 30 degree lens. The bladder is drained before removing the cystoscope. Had the trocar been visualized within the bladder, the trocar would have been removed and repassed. Care is taken to make sure the mesh is not twisted before the same maneuver is performed on the opposite side with the other trocar. Repeat cystoscopy after the second trocar placement confirms there is no evidence of cystotomy. A straight Mayo scissors is placed between the urethra and sling to aid in tensioning the sling. Typically, in hypermobile patients, we leave a small air loop under the urethra to ensure there is no real tension under the urethra. After the trocars are cut off, straight hemostats are placed on the sheath of the sling, which are removed while aiming anteriorly and towards the patient's head in the vector of the sling placement, while the assistant maintains counter tension on the Mayo scissors under the sling in the mid urethra. A moderate loop of mesh can be seen. The vaginal mucosa is closed in a running fashion using a 2L polyglactin suture, locking each stitch to ensure hemostasis. After excess mesh is trimmed at the skin level, steri strips are applied. At the end of the procedure, the bladder is left full and the patient is required to void before discharge.